All right, picking up where we left off, one of the wonderful, I guess, things about mathematics is sometimes challenges you. You sometimes just freeze up and can't remember what what strategy you should do. Um, here we go. This problem, logs, exponents, um, they're really the same sort of thing. Notice what we're taking the log of. Log of 8, log of 4. Can't we write those so that they have the same base? Log of 8, isn't that just log of 2 cubed? And log of 4, that's 2 squared. And then exponents with these logarithms can jump down in front as coefficients. And now, because we have log base 2 over log base 2 divided by itself, we get 1. And this ends up being 3 halves. So, hope you haven't lost complete faith in me. Let's proceed. Show that these are true. Okay, so um, that means we only get to work with one side. We need to show that this side can become that side or that side can become this side. It doesn't really matter, but we really shouldn't work with both sides. I'm going to work with the left. Another way to write 1 ninth. I mean, I look over here, I don't see any fractions. Isn't that 9 to the negative first? And furthermore, I see log of 3 on the right-hand side. Let's change 9 so it has so it's 3 to some power. 3 squared is 9. The negative's already up there, so we have 3 to the negative 2. Oh, and with our third logarithm law, can't I take this exponent down in front? And now we are done. So, next one. Um, hmm. Golly. Well, what could we do? I see a subtraction. Um, now, I know that subtraction usually, when we're talking about logs, d involves division. So, let's take this left hand side and write it as a division problem minus log 2. So if I'm simplifying this quotient, log of the top minus log of the bottom. Well, let's put a 2 down there. Now what divided by 2 is 500? 1,000. And now we can break this apart. Log of 1,000 minus log of 2 10 to what power is 1,000? Well, golly, it's 3. And there we go. We've just shown that these two sides are equal. We start with one side, turn it into the other, and if you need hints for where you go, look at what you're trying to turn it into. We've got two more sets of examples to go through. Um, let's write these as logarithm equations logarithm equations, there's no logs. Well, let's, let's log both sides. Just like any other operation, we can do it to both sides of an equation, and the equation stays equivalent. So the log of y equals log of a squared plus log of b squared. And we can rewrite this further as log y equals 2 log a plus there should not be a squared on this b log b. These problems are just practicing with these laws of logarithms that we'll use as we solve equations involving logs. But we're not there yet. So try b. Pause the video, give it a give it a whirl. First step, log both sides. Now we have a log of a quotient, and 
And what can we do with that three? We can bring it down. Drop it like it's hot. Yeah, I just said that. Log A minus three log B. One more example here. Um, pause the video again, give it a go. See what you can do with part C. So log 20 minus log squared of n. And how many of you stopped here? Hopefully nobody's raising their hand. You'd look silly if you are, first off. But hopefully you recognize that we're not done. Square root of n is just n to the 1 half. So we can go one step further in expanding this. Log p equals log 20 minus 1 half log n. Now you can jump up and down and cheer because now we are done with this one. Last two problems. Huzzah! Here we go. We're almost done. The end is in sight, ladies and gentlemen. Write the following equations without logs. Well, they all have logs. Can I make them go away? No, we cannot. That is very, very bad. Just like with exponents, we can't just make them go away when there's a plus. We can't distribute that, if you will. What we want to do here is we want to turn this problem into log equals log. Just like if we have something squared equals something squared, that square does go away because we can undo it on both sides. If we get log equals log, the logs will go away. And this is sort of why we spent so much time practicing log rules. So log A equals log B plus log C squared. Log A equals log b c squared and now we have log equals log a equals b c squared this is really the opposite process we just did and now for the last example of the day oh man we can't get a log equals log because we got this stupid two here whatever will we do well, we gotta change it so that it is log base two so we can combine it with this other one so 2 equals log base 2 of what? Thought bubble. Thought bubbles are very useful, ladies and gentlemen. This is a sidebar. This is what we're trying to do here. 2 to the second is 4. So log base 2 of m equals log base 2 of a cubed minus log base 2 of 4. Log base 2 of m equals log base 2 of a cubed over 4. And at this point, the logs can disappear. They can go away. m is equal to a cubed over 4. And that concludes our work with laws of logarithms.